Amendment. I was excited to hear Mr. Richard say that we were just going to get on with it because I was getting frustrated by how political this has become. You know, in December, when I moved to adjourn, we had time the last sitting week on the Thursday, would have been happy to sit. I don't get vacation. I'm sure most of us don't. I was trying to spend time with my constituents. I had obligations to them. And I really believe that constituency time matters because our constituents matter. So I'm hoping that we can just get to a vote at least on the amendment that we have, because I keep hearing from the Liberals that they have amendments that they would like to propose. If they have amendments that have a good rationale, I'm happy to consider them. I'm happy to have that discussion. I would like a clear rationale to them as Mr. Desilet has, has given as well. But it, it feels like this is just uh, getting held up. I've been very clear from the beginning. I've said it publicly that I would support Mr. Richard's motion. Um, I know I've interrupted him a few times to try to get him to move the motion. So I, you know, I just want to say, like, he moved it. I appreciated that he didn't have a big speech in front of it. And it's, it's unfortunate that we can't even vote on an amendment that everybody has said that they're comfortable with. It would be at, at good to at least take one step so that we can get one step closer. Um, and I just, I want this done. I think I've been very clear uh, with this committee that I just want this done. And the reality is, you know, I don't know the right answer for this. I really do believe that veterans should be making the final decision. But how that decision is made matters. How that process is made matters. And we have not had clarity. And I really feel sad because this is now blemished. And you know what? That service in Afghanistan should not be blemished with this. So I'm just trying to get to a place where we can figure out what happened. Because I'm sorry, what we were hearing from the minister was not enough for me. It was, I was clear during that, that meeting that it was not clear enough for me. The process was not clear and there was no way to prove it was veterans. And maybe it was. But again, it creates this whole cloudiness that I don't think is fair. So I encourage this committee, please, can we just get at least to the amendment and then hear what the Liberals have to offer. And maybe in the next few minutes, we can actually get this done. Thank you so much. And uh, on the list, I have Mr. Wilson Miao. So thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I'm glad I won't be flying back to my riding of Richmond Center tonight, so I have plenty of time uh, to really get into this. Um, with regards to the amendment, I think uh, before we speak to that, uh, we, we are going to support that, of course, but I understand today is also uh, a very important day. Uh, I'd like to convey my gratitude to thank our veterans because those who especially serve in the Persian Gulf War region in the 1990s to 1991. And uh, on this day, on 1991, the Gulf War ended and more than 4,000 Canadians served in the Persian Gulf region for over a year. And uh, even in the aftermath of this conflict, Canadians are also continue to serving peacekeeping role around this uh, this world and embargo enforcement role there. And uh, I, I sincerely regret that I couldn't make it. I understand most of the members here today were uh, uh, at the memorial uh, laying down the uh, reef uh, for our Gulf veterans uh, to commemorate the, this occasion, which is also the 33rd anniversary of the ceasefire of the Persian Gulf War. And uh, I'd like to encourage all members of the committee, especially uh, those across us, to prioritize my motion, uh, which has been passed and tabled uh, a couple weeks ago. And um, it's agreed to study uh, right after the transition uh, to civilian life uh, study that we're doing. And it's unfortunate that we couldn't hear from the witnesses that had been arranged uh, to speak uh, to us today uh, because of this. And uh, I also 
really want to encourage uh, we get on with the studies that we have on the list, especially surprising that I think uh, th today we receive over 14 motions from the Conservative members. And uh, as, as a you know, newly elected member myself, uh, not too much experience compared to most of those seated around this uh, uh, table here today, I just don't understand why we have to put out so many motions uh, that really is taking up the important work that we're doing. And I was very glad that we actually finished our women veteran study because that is a very important study um, that I feel in the history of Canada that has not been done. And really appreciate uh, uh, Rachel Blaney putting this uh, motion forward. And uh, we're also, uh, also looking forward to the report uh, especially uh, thank you for analysts uh, uh, putting together the report. <clears throat> Going back to the National Monument to Canada's mission in Afghanistan, I recall last year in June, I think all of us, uh, except for those who are new to this committee, had attended the opening ceremony uh, in the War Museum. And really, this, this monument recognized the commitment and sacrifice uh, uh, of the Canadian, not just men, but women who serve in Afghanistan, and as well as supporting those who provide um, uh, safety to Canadians here at home. And I find it quite strange that, you know, we're still discussing on the artists instead of the veterans who is going to be honored uh, with the monument. And I think there's a reason why we're only hearing the opposition member talking about the artist community. Because the reason is most veterans are actually content with the choice for the monument, and they weren't happy with the location choice uh, of the previous government, and rightly so because veterans weren't even consulted for a monument in their honor in the first place. And from my understanding, that location was not as ideal as the location that's being picked here right now. And, you know, I believe that our government is here to listen to veterans and to support them. And uh, as previous study uh, on this, uh, minister have appeared and said many times that Veterans Affairs Canada heard from more than 12,000 Canadians about the monument design. And the majority of those who responded were veterans and their families and those who have served on the mission. And Team Stim Stimson design best reflect their inputs and when it comes to honoring the sacrifice of our veterans, I truly believe that we must listen to them. And that is why I feel it's very important for us to acknowledge that, you know, this design has been set. And uh, we should really respect the voice of our veterans and their families because the monument that is being designed it and built is for them. And... Careful. Are you okay? okay. That's enough out of you. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. I'm just worried that <laughs> you're a bit too tired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, just make sure you don't go across the window. I think the conservative party started drinking. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I understand, you know, we are all here really serving our veterans, uh, and that's why we're here uh, discussing this. And it's important to really continue hearing from our veterans and their families who really want us to do the work we should be doing, especially uh, supporting them with, um, with the transition to civilian life that we're currently studying, and at the same time supporting... <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a point of order, um, yeah, Mr. Just, Richard. I, I noted the member was in, in, indicating he wanted to delegate to other business, and I, I know many of us have been calling for a vote. I'm just curious, on the speaker list, uh, are, um, are there any Conservatives or NDP or Bloc members on the speaker's list present, or is it only Liberals? No, 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 we have uh, different members on the list now. Yeah, 
Exactly. I know. I know. Yeah. I know, well, there's, but, I know there's no conservative yeah. on the list, so I just, yeah. just point out that we could it's, get to a vote if people yeah, wanted it's us not to do a, that, and we could move on to other. The fraud. So. Well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity again to speak, because from representing a riding of Richmond Centre, which there are several uh, veterans in my riding who have been living there and encountering difficulties, especially the world we live in right now. Um, the, the, the things I'm hearing from them is how are we able to provide the support to them so that they can have the dignity to continue uh, after putting out their service to Canada, sacrificing their time and effort and all these uh, to serve the country. And it's important for us to really acknowledge that and continue to give us a responsibility of our government to support the veterans that have served the country. And really, we should put our focus on talking about you know, the possible studies that can be useful for the government. And our role as parliamentary, it is representing the people, not just from our riding, but Canadian across this country. And, um, you know, I, I have the privilege to hear stories from some of the veterans and some of those who serve in Afghanistan. And what I'm hearing from them is, let's get this going, right? Like, since we have breaking ground, we did the opening ceremony, you know, we acknowledged the design from Team Stimson, we should continue to um, do that. And um, I think, uh, not to speak more about this, but, you know, I think it's important for us to move on and, you know, vote on that, that uh, amendment and then uh, hopefully can consider some of the amendment that is being brought forward uh, by our caucus. And, um, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Miao. And on my list, j'ai Monsieur Désilé. Mr. Désilé. Thank you, Chair. Now, it would be logical to say that we're taking a lot of time that could be used uh, to talk about other veterans' issues. That's what, you're, that's what the Liberals want us to do. But you're doing the, the complete opposite. Mr. Bay, I just wanted to correct something that you said earlier. So, yes, we had two ministers come, but we didn't obtain the answers that we wanted. We also tried to get the two former ministers, and they declined our invitation. So, Mr. Sir... Sarai, the jury's decision is not was not unanimous. It has it's a majority decision, and they did have the majority, or the majority was there. Now you referred to this famous uh, survey. How many times are we going to have to say this? But the ten thousand people that were apparently uh, questioned is worth nothing absolutely zero from a statistical or scientific point of view. Now, the Léger firm, the biggest uh, survey forum, uh, wrote to us a great report that you have. So you're, you're defending what's not defendable. Uh, under the pretense of wanting to defend veterans. So I disagree with you. Now, Mr. May, you said, you know, that we should be respecting the rules, following the rules, but you're not following the process. But you know why we're fighting this? It's because there is a process that your government put in place that, and they were competition rules that were very clear and I was completely in agreement with them. But then somewhere the government said they had to either accept the jury's decision or relaunch a comp competition. But then the government went and chose a third option saying that we don't want this monument, we're going to go get another one. So, and you know this, my colleagues, or dear colleagues. Now, Ms. Hepster, and I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name correctly. Now, it's great that you're coming with a solution uh, of two monuments. The Canada is large enough to have uh, space for two monuments. Uh, exactly. Uh, and, you know, that is a proposal that's, you know, circulating among liberals, but 